It's Monday here on the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're joined by Ray Fittipaldo. We've got a long weekend after the Steelers won their game Thursday, but now all the questions point to what's up with George Pickens? How does the how do the Steelers get him more involved and what's his future with the team? We'll talk about that. Cam Hayward's return and an AFC North division that just refuses to lose. It's a fun episode of the North Shore Drive podcast with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Let's get into it. You are now listening to the North Shore Drive Podcast, a show on all things Pittsburgh sports from the writers of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, hosted by Christopher Carter. Hello and welcome to the North Shore Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. He's Ray Fittipaldo, one of our Steam Steelers beat writers here. We're both of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. You can find all our work at post-gazette.com. You can find this show, the North Shore Drive Podcast, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel to get more of all the daily content that comes out from Post-Gazette Sports here. Reminder, this show is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Be sure to get down to Mike's Beer Bar in the North Shore. They're right across the street from PNC Park on Federal Street. They have over 20 TVs for you to watch whatever sporting event you want to catch and over 500 different available beers, 300 of those beers being local, 80 of those local beers being on, on, available on tap. We'll get to more on Mike's Beer Bar later, but really, the big talk in Pittsburgh this weekend wasn't the win, wasn't celebrating the Steelers being 5-3 and three and being, you know, be, being ahead of where a lot of people had them being. It was George Pickens. Now, we're going to skip all the Instagram nonsense because that's where a lot of people were focusing on social media. What, who is, who is he following who is he unfollowing that's not the concern but what is a concern for a lot of people and a legitimate one is george pickens demeanor at the end of the titans win where he could be seen on the side on on the bench with a towel over his head not celebrating with deontay johnson his first touchdown since george pickens joined the team last year um and you know and then also coming off you know being the first to come off the field uh at the at the end of the game first in the locker room and not exactly looking too pleased despite the team won. Now, he did have two catches for negative one yards, and he also missed a toe tap, so there's a lot of discussions there. But one thing Kenny Pickett brought up after the game, and I, and I asked him this question because I wanted to see how Kenny would respond, and Kenny was like, hey, and I asked him, you know, what has to happen more with George Pickens to get involved? And Kenny's like, he's helping us so much because – Teams are double teaming him. They're keeping a safety over top. They're opening up so many other things because they want to take away George Pickens. That is an asset to the Steelers. Ray, how much of what how much of what you see right now is more so about that what defenses are trying to do for this do against the Steelers and do against George Pickens versus Pickens still does need to be a lot better than he is right now. I mean, I, I think it's 90% of it, Chris. I mean, if if you look at the way he's been defended, um, really over the last three or four games, um, lots and lots of double teams. Um, you know, you go back to the Ravens game, got single coverage for whatever reason, he took advantage. But um, the majority of the time, teams were paying special attention to him. And since Deontay Johnson has been back, the Steelers have done a pretty decent job of, uh, you know, having Deontay Johnson make an impact on, on games. Um, you know, he's done it in the two games that, that, that he's been back. I think he's up around 80 or 90 yards in each of those games. And, of course, he scored the winning touchdown here against the Titans. So, you know, uh, you know, who is George mad at? Is George mad at himself for not getting his feet down in the end zone? Or is he mad at Matt Canada for not scheming to get him open more? Uh, I also will point out, Chris, that Pat Fryermuth is out. Um, once Pat gets back, I think that's going to have um, mm -hmm. a positive impact on the offense. And, you know, this is kind of uh, obvious if you look at their numbers, but Calvin Austin and, and Allen Robinson haven't really stepped up the way you would want them to step up. So Agreed. I don't know if George is frustrated with the OC, if he's frustrated with the other receivers, but whatever the case is, I think he just has to have a little bit of patience. You know, Fryermuth will be back soon, and then I think, you know, we'll, we'll finally see what this offense is truly capable of in the passing game. Um yeah, but right now I think he's just got to be patient and just sort of stay the course and, uh, you know, let Deontay get his, so to speak. It really seems like this town is gripped with PTSD of Antonio Brown. 
because anytime any receiver, and it's not just George Pickens, when Deontay Johnson, you know, he would post like cryptic messages on Twitter sometimes and people, like, oh, is he turning into A B? And now George Pickens, you know, just does the things on, on Instagram and he's, oh, is he turning into A B? Everyone turns into A B with this. But this happens everywhere. Look at the Bills with Stephon Diggs. The last two years, there have been like cryptic messages that he's put and oh, he's gonna be gone. This the Bills can't keep him, then he's back in the in the year, and Josh Allen's throwing him touchdown and they're fine and so I, I think part of this is just there's especially nfl wide receivers this is just what happens when things aren't working well and the wide receiver is a you know a, a peculiar position to be in because you can do everything you could be the best route runner in the world and not get targeted and that can be frustrating when you're when you're doing your job so well and no one's giving you any chances now again george pickens had some had some changes one particular chance where if he, to, he just gets a simple toe tap in he gets he he gets his he he gets a touchdown and the Steelers might win that game going away and then maybe he is different and to your point maybe Pickens isn't mad as much at everyone else as he's mad at himself for, for missing that touchdown and then not getting a chance to make up for it at the end of the game that could that could be that and that and to be fair to George Pickens we he he hasn't said anything it's just been right. him posting on Instagram or just even going private on Instagram and people freaking out about it. So again, that's not the big concern here. I think the big concern here will be how does Pickens' demeanor continue in these next in these next few games? You know, if he's given one-on-one -on -one opportunities and if he's given those those targets, what does he do with them? When he's not given, when if if he's being doubled by the Packers in this upcoming game and he doesn't get a lot of targets because of it, how does he handle that? That to me will be the important part of where George Pickens goes in his in his career for Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, Chris. One more point about the offense. You know, we concentrated just on the passing game here. But when teams play cover two shell the way they were um, in this past game, <coughs> excuse me, for the Titans, um, look at the running game. Look at the Steelers running power, getting guards mm -hmm. up on linebackers, uh, getting mm -hmm. tackles up on linebackers. Um, that's going to open up as well. Jalen Warren had, I think, 88 yards on 11 carries, eight yards per carry. Uh, Najee Harris, I think, 69 on uh, 16 carries. So it's not just a passing game. The running game is a big beneficiary of, um, of, of when George Pickens is double teamed too. So um, I, I just think he, he's got to be sat down. He's got to be told. Uh, he's got to be given a bigger perspective of just number 14 in a box, right? He's got to have that whole right. offensive perspective. And uh, listen, it, it's not like Mike Tallman doesn't have experience with this. <laughs> he, he's been dealing <laughs> with this really since – for the better part of the last decade, um, you know, so we'll see how it turns out. You know, I, I, I think it's something to watch here, but I don't necessarily think that it was worth all the uh, hullabaloo that was all over social media here over the sort of mini bye weekend that the Steelers had. No, I, I agree with that entirely. Now, I wanted to, I want to ask you this about George Pickens, though. Where's, where does he fit into what the Steelers' future plans at wide receiver need to be? Because right now, Deontay Johnson's getting paid, but the Steelers are going to be in an interesting position where his contract's going to run up soon. And then George Pickens, his rookie deal has two more years left on it. You still got Calvin Austin. Like you said, they haven't stepped up. Uh, you know, I'll ask you another question about Calvin in a second here, but wh what's the future of this Steelers wide receiver room? Do you foresee right now that this team may need to just go get another wide receiver? That's going to be a contributor very soon in the draft to give themselves a cushion so that they are not having that. They're, they're not being put between a rock and a hard place. I think in a perfect world, you know, the contracts are kind of synced up when George is um, eligible for a new contract, Deontay's um, contract will pretty, pretty much be off the book. So in an ideal world, you know, George would then make number one receiving money and they can make the, make a decision on Deontay. Do they bring him back for, you know, uh, uh, a more modest amount or do they simply move on? And I think regardless of that, Chris, I think they need to draft the receiver in the first two rounds um, in May, um, you look at the production of Allen Robinson. I know he's made a couple of big third down catches, but it's really like one catch a game. If you look at his numbers, one or two catches yeah. a game, Calvin Austin, other than jet sweeps and taking the top off of defense, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't usually doesn't what's his role. Um, there's no intermediate passing game with him. Um, and I, I just don't see him developing, into a, uh, you know, top three tier sort of receiver within any offense. So people say he's a gadget guy. I don't want to pigeonhole him, but 
he's not developed into a top three receiver in my mind. So if you look at the Steelers track record, and I know they have a new GM and a new director of player personnel, I understand that. Um, but if you look at their track record, they've always gotten guys relatively early in drafts. I think they can do that again. You look at Andy's record um, in Philadelphia. He was never afraid to go out and get a receiver in the first round. Jalen Rager didn't work mm. out, okay, but Devonta Smith has in some respects. So, um, you know, I, I think they'll get together over the offseason, whether it comes in the first round or the second round or the third round, I don't know. But I think you could pretty much guarantee there's going to be one taken – in the first three rounds of that draft. I'm right with you there. Last question on the receivers before we move on here and talk some Cam Hayward. You brought up Calvin Austin, you know, right there. And I, I, I agree. There's, he's not, he's not being, he's not being used, but how much of that do you think is more on Calvin Austin versus maybe the Steelers offense, you know, is still limited, whether it's Matt Canada or Kenny Pickett. And it's just not him not getting as many opportunities because, they're, they've been so focused on using either their one or two player makers at wide receiver, the top two wide receivers, or using the run game. Yeah, I think when Deontay Johnson was out, we saw Kenny try to do a lot of back throw, shoulder throws to Calvin, and he, he's just a small guy. And you got to be able to be a bigger guy to have success in those 50 50 types of balls. He just didn't have a feel for that. So um, I think they tried to expand his route tree a little bit when Deontay was out but since Deontay's been back obviously he and George Pickens are your top two receivers and then they've kind of just been um divvying up the targets and in a small sample size or in a small um uh in a small size you know it's Allen Robinson it's Calvin Austin it's Connor Hayward none of those guys are getting more than what three or four or five targets in a game and it's yeah. just kind of it's kind of all Pickens and, and Johnson right now so I don't know whose fault it is um, you know, Robinson is sort of pigeonholed as that possession type of receiver. You know, I think they go to Calvin for maybe some of the, the bigger plays and the, you know, the stuff in the running game. But right now it is what it is. I, you know, I'm not saying that he's not going to be on the team next year, but um, like I said, I think they have to go out and get another receiver who can be in that top three. And then Calvin Austin is maybe that number four or number five guy. And maybe he can sort of figure out what his role is by this time next year. Maybe we'll see there. Ray wrote a really, really good story on Cam Hayward this over the weekend. We got we want to look at the Steelers captain and his return to, to the field and what it's going to mean for the Steelers defense, run defense, everything because of his importance. We'll get to all that in a minute here on the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato talking Steelers. But first, I want to remind you this this episode is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the number one bar in all of Pittsburgh. Go to Mike's Beer Bar uh, right right on the North Shore. It's right across the street from PNC Park on Federal Street. You go there today. You can get you can you can reserve a table with the, with any of their twenty plus TVs that are on any sporting event that you can that you can imagine, and that you can get that game right on the TV, right for you and your friends to enjoy. And you can enjoy one of their five hundred different available beers, three hundred of those beers being local, and eighty of those local beers being available on tap it's an amazing options all, all across the board and mike's beer bar let also switches beers out every single week so you're getting new options every week the menu is always changing i've been there early in the morning when we're getting ready to film a show there on our on our on our, our friday show and they're switching out the menus that's a whole process they have to do because they have so many options and they're trying to give you the best options out there and they do so go to mike's beer bar today and when you get there you can also get a steak on a stone for one of their amazing meal options it's your choice cut a steak brought to you on a heated stone every piece that you cut off you press into that stone you can choose how well you want every piece of your steak done by simply pressing into that stone and enjoying a great time at mike's beer bar the best bar in pittsburgh go to mike's beer bar to get your sports fix and experience the best bar in pittsburgh and when you get there tell them chris sent you We're back here on the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato, talking Steelers. Ray, you wrote about Cam Hayward's uh, making up for lost time after seven weeks with his with his groin injury. Um, Cam Hayward, when he was coming off the field, I swore he said, "It's like I need them ten days now," because he was he was feeling his first action back, but. I, you know, I think what you could you could see him contributing in this game. You could see him helping in this game. And the Steelers' run defense wasn't necessarily elite in this game. They still let up 105 yards on the ground. But 
the past couple games, even even with the Jaguars game before he returned, I think they're, they're trending in a better direction because early on this season, they gave 188 to the Niners, 198 to the Browns. They gave up 139 to the, to the Texans. Um, and against the Jaguars and the Titans, they've kept it just a little over 100. It, 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 do you see Cam Hayward helping this defense get back on track there? Or do you think that he's not, that he's kind of limited in what he's going to be able to do at this part of his career? No, I, I think once he gets his conditioning back, Chris, he's going to be, you know, hopefully for the Steelers, the same old Cam Hayward. I think what you saw happen in that Titans game, he had to play a lot more snaps than they anticipated because Montrevious mm-hmm. Adams went down early in that game with an ankle injury. And then on top of that, he had a really tough matchup with Pete Skaronsky. I mean, Skaronsky was a um, highly touted rookie coming out of Northwestern. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're, you're going to expend a lot of energy – when you're in one-on-one types of matchups with, with a really good player um, like that. So, I, you know, I wrote about it. You know, Cam was so gassed, he couldn't even stay on the field for the final play. And if you know Cam Hayward, he always wants to be out there in those the, those situations where the game is in the balance. But uh, he just physically wasn't there. I think, if I remember correctly, 41 of the, 20, uh, of the 74 defensive snaps. And we didn't get a number from Cam or from the coaches, but – I'm guessing that number was probably supposed to be somewhere between 20 and 30, you know, Mm. in his first game back. So he had to play more. Um, You know, I think this mini bye week helped with 10 days to get ready for that Packers game. So, uh, yeah, once he's back, I I think it's going to be huge for that defense, not only in the run defense, Chris, but that interior pass rush really lacks without him. I mean, Larry and Joby is okay. He doesn't give you a lot in the pass rush, though. Um, You know, Benton – is good, but he's a rookie. Louder Milk doesn't give you much in the pass rush. Um, Watts doesn't either. It's just, it, it's one of those things where he's one of the elite players in his position in the NFL. And when mm-hmm. he's out, you're going to miss him. But when he comes back, hopefully, you know, he can come back and be the same player uh, that he's always been. Absolutely. Keanu Benton and Larry Ogunjobi both got three pressures in, in the game officially. Um, and I, I agree. It's like that's that's decent. That that's that's fine for what they're given. But when Cam Hayward's at his best, he was he, he's getting a lot more than that. And that's with a group that's already getting 10 pressures from Alex Highsmith and seven pressures from TJ Watt in that game. But again, Cam Hayward, I think a big part of what Cam Hayward also brings is he's still that leader in the locker room. He's still the guy that everyone looks to uh, on, you know, on or off the field. Can his presence also shore up a lot of other things? Because I felt like last year too, even more than just his play, he was very much part of the defense coalescing and finding ways to come together and improve, especially in the run defense as the, as the year went on, they went out starting as one of the worst run defenses in the league last year that ended up, I think being uh, uh, in the top 10 last year. Yeah. Listen, sometimes, um, you know, leadership is overstated, but I, I definitely think, Chris, in this situation with Minka Fitzpatrick out, um, and he wasn't placed on IR, so that's really good news. It looks like he's going to be able to come back within uh, a couple more weeks here. Um, but then with Cole Holcomb going down, um, you know, it, it was terrible timing that Cole went out, but also with Cam co- coming back, it's like, okay – at least we got one of our guys back here. So yeah. they're going to have to deal with that Holcomb injury. I think that's maybe a, a little bit understated, what, what he's meant to that defense here, being on the field all the time, um, being one of the team's leading tacklers. But with Cam Hayward back, I just think he lifts up the spirit of everyone around him. He plays hard. That's contagious. And I think you know that could go a long way into um, you know how this defense plays in the second half, obviously. Quan Alexander, Landon Roberts, Mark Robinson, they all have to play bigger roles than they have, um, you know, to this point. But those guys are veterans, too. And I think Robinson was knocking on the door. So in that respect, maybe those guys can step up. Big shoes to fill. But, um, uh, you know, I I think with Cam back, I, I think that's one positive here for the Steelers going into this Packers game. Certainly, certainly big shoes to fill for Mark Robinson, Robinson to get, get in get in there. Cole Holcomb was playing well. And I, and also, like you said, Quan Alexander, Landon Roberts, they're playing well right now. But it's been that rotation that's been healthy for the Steelers yeah. and helping them a lot of ways. Another thing that could help them is if Minka Fitzpatrick returns sometime soon. I'm not sure if he'll return this week with his hamstring injury. 
but his return could also solve a lot of things for the middle part of that defense moving yeah. forward, and especially in a competitive AFC North that just went 4-0 and for another weekend in, in NFL football. We'll talk about the AFC North on the other side of this break here because – Ultimately, the Steelers are still competing in a very – they're still second. They're still holding on to second. But, man, the other teams are not making it easy to, to stay, in, stay in this race uh, for, the, for the playoffs, even though they're in it right now. We'll talk about that and what the Steelers need to do moving forward here on the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. But first, I want to remind you this show is also brought to you by Savinas, Kane, and Gallucci. They're mesothelioma and asbestos lawyers with over 85 years of experience. Call them now. That's Savinas, Kane, and Gallucci for your free consultation. Also brought to you by GameTime.co. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. GameTime is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. If you ever had to buy tickets for an event but weren't comfortable because you weren't sure if what you were paying for was worth the price because you didn't know the view of the seats, guess what? GameTime is the best app you can download right to your phone to help figure that out. When you look at a seat on Game at, on Game Time, they show you the view from the seat. So you're not just seeing it on the seating chart. You're seeing what you're actually going to look like when you're actually sitting in those seats. And you're also going to see all the real prices of the seats. A lot of a lot of places will, will show you it will have hidden fees that when you get to the end of buying the ticket process, you're saying, wait a minute, I pay, I thought I was paying this price. Not on game time. Game time makes sure that when you click on a price, that is the price that you're paying, and you know all those prices up front. And all it takes is two clicks of a button, the tickets are yours, and you're getting in to enjoy your favorite event. And again, it's sporting events. If you want to catch a Steelers game, want to catch a Penguins game, want to catch pit games, because those those are going up, all those are available on the game time app right now that you can download tickets right to your phone and even book tickets up to an hour after the after, after the event has started and again game time has the best prices and they're so confident they give you a best price guarantee they can't be beat if you find tickets in the same section a row for less somewhere else game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code pitt pit for 20 dollars off your first purchase or go to their website gametime.co term and conditions apply create an account and redeem code pitt pit for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed Back here in the North Shore Drive podcast, Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato, talking Steelers here. Actually, we're talking AFC North here because, man, Ray, another weekend, and this division continues to not lose. I believe this is now back-to-back weekends where they've gone 4-0. and I think in the last – I think they've, they've gone undefeated in three of the last four NFL weekends. That is ridiculous. If the playoffs were to start right now, the entire division would be in the playoffs. The Ravens would be the two seed at seven and two tied with the chiefs there. The chiefs would get the tiebreaker, but then the Steelers would be the fifth seed. The the Browns would be the sixth seed and the Bengals would be the seventh seed. And man, this is a tight race. And that means teams like the teams, like the bills, the jets, the, the, the Texans, they'd all be out on this race. Is it actually possible that we could see an entire division make the playoffs, or do you think we start seeing some some di- distance being created in the coming weeks? Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably like a 5 to 7% chance, Chris, just because you're going to be playing each other down the stretch here. I know the Steelers have two coming up against the Bengals and the Browns, and uh, unless those games are just right down the middle, split evenly, and they all finish 10 and 7, or, or nine and eight, you know, it's going to be hard um, for all four to make the playoffs, but that doesn't detract from what this division is. I think this is by far the best division in football. Um, you look at some of the scores that, that Baltimore has been winning by. You look at some of the impressive victories that Cleveland has had. You look at the way the Bengals have come on here. Um, it, it's very impressive. Um, and it's that time of year. You mentioned that, you know, people are starting to look at the NFL playoff picture. I think right now, you know, if you want to look at some of the betting sites, uh, Baltimore, Cleveland, and Cincinnati are all favored to make the playoffs. The Steelers are anywhere like in that 43 to 47% range. If you look at um, ESPN's, you know, football power index, or if you look at the New York Times postseason simulator, they're right there. So if they win again this weekend, that's probably even going to be bumped up closer to 50%. So, um, you know, going undefeated every week for this division – It's not sustainable, but it's pretty fun right now watching all these teams go out there every Sunday because they're winning, and oftentimes they're winning in impressive fashion. 
Indeed, that you know, it's it's been it's been crazy. I mean, you look at some of these scores. The Ravens blow out another team. They blew they blew out the Lions a few weeks ago. They blew out the Seahawks this weekend. Uh, the Browns yeah. against a a, a Car- Cardinals team that is clearly given up, sure, but they still shut yeah. them out twenty seven to nothing. That's that's impressive. The Bengals looking sh- very strong against the Buffalo Bills, like they're in a different class than the Buffalo Bills. And yeah. man, you look at that, and you're sitting here, the Steelers, and you're just sitting here like, man, can 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 you keep this up? Ray, in your opinion, can the Steelers team keep up with the rest of this division? Because one thing that everyone's going to point to is, man, they're not scoring a lot of points. Man, they're they're winning by such few, such little margins. But you look at the rest of their schedule. This next week, they got the Packers at home. Not an impressive team. They did win this weekend, but I'm, I haven't been impressed by Jordan Love. You get a rematch with the Browns, a team that you've already beaten. You do have the Bengals on the road in a couple of weeks, but then after that, you have the Cardinals at home, the Patriots at home, and the Colts on the road after that. If yeah. they just win the Packers, Cardinals, Patriots, and Colts games, they're a nine-win team. Right. That doesn't even include getting their, their rematch with the Browns or the Ravens or the Seahawks in, in this game. And nine wins – Gets you a good shot at the playoffs, at least in most at least in most years. Do you like the Steelers' chances to make the playoffs right now and to stay in the in the thick of the division? I, those four games you mentioned, you're right. They win those, they get to nine, they'll be favored in all four of those games. To me, can you get one upset in those final games, either at Seattle, at Baltimore, at Cleveland, at Cincinnati, or Cincinnati at home? Nine and eight, Chris. Um, I don't know if that's going to do it. Right now, the Steelers are four and two in conference, but if you project that out and they lose some of those other games, I think they'd probably be close to six and six at the end if they lost all those games that they're supposed to lose and win all those games they're supposed to win. Six and six might not get it done from a tiebreaker perspective. So mm. obviously it'll depend on how the Texans, the Chargers, you know, the Bills, all these other teams, how they do in the final stretch of the season. I would not feel comfortable at, at nine and eight. I think nine and eight is doable. I might even say likely, but I would not feel comfortable about my playoff chances if it was just nine and eight. I think they need to get to 10 wins to get into the postseason. Oh, oh no, I, I agree. I'm just looking at the games that I consider very winnable for them. And then again, we're not even, again, I, I think the Seahawks are a team that has not, they, they, they're kind of still, I think they're kind of living off the hype of how they performed last year, especially Geno Smith, but they have not looked particularly great this year. The Seahawks have, um, and in these division games, you know, anything can happen in, in these contests. The Steelers are two and oh, and I think you look back at those two wins over the Ravens and the Browns and all the crazy things that happened in those games. Those were such huge wins because now that not only are the Steelers five and three, but they're two and oh in the division in a competitive division. So, Let's say let's say the Steelers do keep pace with the Ravens and the and the, and, the, and all the other teams, and it gets down to the nitty gritty, and the Steelers finish maybe four and two in the division. They're going to have a lot of tiebreakers in their favor to bump them up in the division and keep the the other the, the other t- say above the other teams if they tie with them. And again, if I'm, when I'm talking about the nine wins, those are the games that I think that they absolutely should win in, in this in the, in the in the rest of the season. But if they go if they go out and they win those four games and one or two more. I think they're in a great position, but the other thing you have to consider is too the Browns don't exactly have a a, t- a tough schedule the rest the rest of the way. Sure, they got the Ravens uh, th- this week. We'll see how that game plays out. Then they play the Steelers again, but after that they got the Broncos who haven't been too impressive, even though they did beat the Chiefs recently. They've got the Rams who haven't been too impressive. They do have the Jaguars. That could be a game with, that the Steelers use to catch up on them. But some of these last games, the Bears at home, the Texans, maybe the Jets. Uh, and then they finish on the road against the Bengals. But those, there's a lot of games on their schedule that's winnable too. I don't think this is a cakewalk to the playoffs. But again, if the Steelers keep finding ways to pull games out and keep being this this gritty team, I can see the the path to the playoffs there. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to advance this conversation, um, you know, to the postseason and what has to happen, can the Steelers' offense take another step? Can you feel mm. better about the Steelers' offense? Um, let's say they got into the playoffs. Will there be any more hope than there was in 2021 when they kind of got their doors blown off um, in Kansas City? Um, You know, same thing with with, with the Browns in 2020. I don't know. You know, the Steelers were probably favored in that game, but that wasn't a team that was playing great at the end of that season. So for me, I mean, it's, it's great that the defense is, is balling out. I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive. It's kind of the formula that we all, 
kind of thought was going to happen. It's happened to this point, but for them to be a serious, legitimate contender, a team that might win a playoff game, Chris, Kenny Pickett's got to step it up. Passing game's got to step it up and the running game's got to become more consistent. If that happens, Hey, maybe you're peaking at the right time. I just haven't seen much evidence that that is going to happen here at the midway point of the season. Hey, we've all been we've all been asking when it's going to happen for about nine weeks now, and it hasn't happened yet as far as the offense. But they at least they, they took a small step forward in their in their last win, and they've what won three out of their last four. If they can, you know, like I, I agree with you entirely. If this offense finds something, just doesn't just isn't terrible, then this team becomes so much better, and it balances what the effort the defense has given, and it could put them in a position to be playing much better football come December when they need to win a lot of those football games down the stretch. But we have a lot more to see here. Mike Tomlin speaks Tuesday. We'll hear from him and, and his thoughts on, on the Steelers' upcoming matchup with the Green Bay Packers, and we'll be getting you for that matchup. We're getting ready for that matchup all week long here at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, post-gazette.com for all of our written work. Thanks so much, Ray, for joining us here in the North Shore Drive podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're both from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. You can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel for all of our daily content that comes from all of our Pittsburgh sports reporters. Uh, on this, on when it comes to the uh, our sports department, we will be back Wednesday with more thoughts here on the Pittsburgh Steelers, right here on North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all the sports coverage from the Post-Gazette that we have to offer, visit post-gazette.com.